Apologies, the order is 601. Roll call? Yes. Mr. Markovitz? Here. Mrs. Fraser? Here. Mr. Midlick? Here. Mr. Sharma? Here. Mr. Spice? Here. And Mrs. Walker? Here. Yeah, it looks like we all got our prints, so. We have all members of the board here today. Um, we were mailed the minutes from June 17th. And one thing I noted on there is I'm not sure that the vote was recorded properly on case three. Um, there was a tie vote. And if I recall correctly, were we on the same side on that one? First one was first one was three to one. I was the descending mode. Yes, and the second one was tied. Right. So I'm not sure that that was recorded correctly. Who was on which side of the vote? If that matters to anyone, um, I actually lost sleep over that case. Um, I was down in Tennessee last week, and I was looking at some of the materials that were presented that we voted on, and um, I I just you know I, I do scans firmly on what I believe is a good quality metal roof for the commercial district for downtown. The material that was presented that was corrugated where you, either they have screws that go through it every, I don't know, two feet or so. Mm -hmm. um, that detail is seen on a lot of cabins, shacks, sheds, agricultural buildings, horse stables, sometimes in a vertical application, other times in a roofing application, but never in a prestigious location. Anywhere that was a building that was a higher end in stature uses a standing seat. Yeah, and I think uh, regarding that, it would have to be codified if you want a specific type of material to be permitted or only limited to that. Um, I would have to say that I have seen the corrugated in other places that were higher end. There was that Hoggies in Valley View, they used it for that. It's sort of a theme type thing on uh, a lot of the uh, Chipotle's. So it is used quite a bit. Okay, when it's imitating um, places that are uh, rural, you know, like a Chipotle would be imitating something that's more Latin America. Mm -hmm. um, kind of shacky. Shacky, yes. And um, Hoggies would be imitating something that's Southern that follows that same set. So it's just a matter of if that's the character we're looking for for our downtown district. I personally, as a member of the board, we're supposed to be looking at the aesthetics of it, and I don't see that as being the direction we want our downtown to head. The shacky, um, yeah, more agricultural look. I think we're looking for something that looks more refined. And a lot of that has to do with the detailing of it. Every time you have a penetration, every one of those screw holes is a penetration through the metal roof, and that's where the rust starts, and that's where the leaking occur starts to occur, and that's why it's used on lower, um, in, in lower income areas or in areas that don't have the capital investment. Yeah. And I don't think that it's inappropriate in all cases, but I think as a commercial building right on the square, I don't think that that is um, the, an appropriate material that we're adding it to. And it did pass so that they are able to do that. I was the only descending vote on that one. Mm -hmm. um, but I just wanted to... Yeah. Yeah. I, I spent quite some time researching it in the last okay. week. I'm sure the lost some sleep. I've taken a lot of photos of different yeah. examples. I've been looking into it, and I know we do have a listing of which materials are appropriate and inappropriate. And I don't know if we specified which styles of metal roofs yeah. um, no. are appropriate and inappropriate. And if it comes down to the detailing of it, if there's a way to do that where it's seamless, but that's a mansard roof um, on at least half of it. And a lot of places do not use that type of material on an answer roof. That's where you go, because it's such a small amount of roof that's seen, that's where you go high quality. That's where you go with the real slate, the real shake. Because there's only, you know, there's not many square feet of it. The rest of the roof is flat and tarred and nobody sees it. But that part that's really visible, it's almost like an awning, but it's roof. 
you know, that's where you go with the higher end materials. And being right on the square, I think it's important that we try to up the quality of what's here. It doesn't cost that much more. I mean, somebody says it costs three times as much. Well, if we're looking at $2,000 versus $6,000, it makes a big difference on the face of the building. I think going forward, we should have to survive the code. We could have our internal discussion about it and how we're going to proceed going forward with something like this. Yeah, I mean, we should have it written down. Right, I agree. Going forward. Yeah. So, um, but my comment before approving the minutes was just that I was concerned whether or not that was recorded properly with the vote was yeah. in that case. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, I, I agreed I, with you on that, but I did vote for it. Right. So. Right. I guess if the minutes would reflect, obviously, whatever you've discussed. If the board moves in a certain direction, that's the direction you go in. So right. if it passed, it passed. But I think if you want to discuss or further dive into details of materials, you might have to form a committee, have that brought forward, then it would have to go through council, I think, and then codify it. So, so then I'll make a motion to approve the minutes. Um, do anybody say as noted because I question whether the votes were recorded properly or not. As I read it, I said exactly how I voted. I thought I voted the other way. Did I confuse myself at the end here? Right. So I, I mean, you could suspend exactly. the approval on it till the next meeting uh, when Sonia returns and discuss it with her. Okay. But uh, if you've read through the minutes, I mean, I could note it as approved. All right, we'll suspend the approval on that. Yeah, I would like to get more details about that. I do agree. I did vote yes for it. But I did agree with Jen. We if you look at the minutes, that my, yeah, my question was for the that's one discussion. The approval of the minutes is kind of separate. And that one, I was just thinking that you and I were on the same side of that one because I thought your vote flipped between the two votes, and I was surprised because I thought that I was standing alone, and then you flipped to the other side, and I went, oh, now I don't know if I should have voted this way. I'm not on the um, asphalt roof. Yeah, I was yeah. Because looking back at it, I'm thinking maybe I should have went ahead and voted yes on the black asphalt roof. Yeah, I was worried with no asphalt roof. Right. So I asked the vote that I think was recorded improperly on the minutes. So you're so. saying what you said correctly, the uh, recording of the minutes were incorrect? Correct. Yes, I think that the recorded, the minutes as recorded, or as reported on, on paper, I don't think that properly reflects what we voted. Well, did you listen to the minutes, uh, the recording prior to this meeting? I was at the meeting personally. I know, but but it, it's like, you. I just want to know if, if you listen to the minutes and then, and then, has, the minutes, what you, I'm we, sorry, listen to the recording because what right. you, if you said yes, then the recording, what did the recording say? Right. I didn't listen to the recording. I read the, the printed minutes. We get a paper copy of it. Yeah, I know, I know. But yeah, if you're, it, yeah, but if you're in, sh if, I don't know. I think I would have listened to the to the recording. If I first. recall correctly, you and I both voted no on the asphalt. Yes. And Don and John voted yes. The way that the minutes were recorded, it says that I voted yes along with Don. But you said you didn't vote yes. You voted Correct. no. We did two votes. That's why I'm saying that I, th I yeah. believe that the minutes were recorded improperly. Yeah, we had two motions, you're right. We did two motions on that. I would be okay. We actually had three that. motions on it. Yeah. And one of them passed unanimously for the standing scene. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that the minutes need to be re-looked there because I don't think that they were recorded properly. Even though now looking back, I may say, well, you know, maybe I would have voted. That's not what happened. And it was recorded mm -hmm. incorrectly. Right. So. I, yeah, I okay. just feel that whatever was recorded should reflect the, the minutes, minutes right. which it does not currently. Right. Okay. So I don't want to approve the minutes from June 17th. I'll second that. Okay. okay. Motion. Is to um, table the minutes for next meeting. Suspend approval until the next approval. scheduled meeting. Mm -hmm. And the second is by Mr. Sharma. Yes. Roll call. Uh, Mr. Markowitz. Uh, I probably have to stay <coughs> here, so I don't know what that all. I think you can Mr. Midlick. Yes. <coughs> Mrs. Frazier. Yes. Even though you weren't here. 
Mr. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Spice. Yes. And Mrs. Walker. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Um, is there anyone here tonight that is um, participating as a member of the public who does not have a case number? Okay. Then we will um, start with the first case and we will take um, each case in order as on the agenda. The first case is 1925 Enterprise Parkway. Hi, uh, Dan Beeman Wagner Electric Sign Company, Leary, Ohio, and 1925 Parkway is where Windstream's located. And what we're proposing is just refacing the existing monument sign. So all of the existing copy would come off and the sign itself will get painted um, black and then new form lettering and a logo will go back on and it is not illuminated. You say it is or it's not? Is not. not. And the letters are about a half an inch deep? Uh, they're an inch deep, form plastic. They're, 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 pinned, they're pinned onto the okay, face of the material. Okay. So this is a, um, it's a new look for uh, when Yeah, it's a logo, a branding update. So totally different looking yeah. from what you have. Yeah. Do the plastic letters have black returns? Uh, I do, no. They have like the white, Windstream will have white. Uh, and then the logo, the logo will have black returns. So your, your logo itself has black returns, the letters and the numbers have white returns. And the holes from the old letters would all be filled? Yeah, well, I'm sure when it gets painted, it'll get patched up. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve it as uh, submitted. I'll second it. Roll call. Mr. Markowitz? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Bindlick? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. And Mr. Spice? Yes. yes. I'll give him a Mrs. Line. Walker? I'm not calling you. <laughs> I thought I'd call you. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Just have it. <laughs> what project are you? Uh, it's 2019 Trailwood Drive. Right, That's the matter with agenda. Okay. Um, we can do a preliminary review um, before the work session, or there's no work session on it, before adjournment at the end here, we can do a preliminary review without you being on the agenda. Okay. We can't do an official vote until we make the agenda. So the next item on the agenda is case number 210756, 10755 Ravenna Road, Family Martial Arts Signage, Tim Loomis Owner. Yeah, there's five signs. Good evening. I brought copies too. It looks like somebody made copies for you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fabulous. Somebody made us copies. 
Did, have you made any changes? Uh, no, no. I just made copies of the same packet I submitted okay. to the city. Yep. So we have uh, actually moved our business from the square down to Alpha Legends Gym, and uh, I'm looking to put permanent signage up there uh, above the uh, on the face of the wall there. Uh, the design of the sign now matches something similar to the Alpha Legends Gym. And uh, the sign will be constructed by e Easy Sign here in Twinsburg. Okay. Is it a flat face on it? Uh, I believe the face of it is uh, 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 aluminum. Yeah. Are you located within Alpha Legends Gyms? Yes. Uh, you know, the, the space out in front where they had their uh, Zumba classes and things, we've now taken that over, and now that's our martial arts school. Right, and so, so you're operating within the gym, so you have Correct. your own sign to let people know that you're inside in there. Correct. So just as long as the uh, total square footage for both signs together is within the allowable amount, then I think that's fine. You know, when I uh, proposed this to the city, we looked it all up, and the building department said you've got more than enough space to put a six by six sign up. Yeah, and it looks nice where it is. It's nice to see a sign. Thank you. Uh, yeah. There was a sign there before, so there's holes there which will cover up. So <laughs> actually, yeah. hopefully, it will look better. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Okay. 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 I have a couple questions for you. Yes. I was uh, there at this building, and um, I noticed that um, that the sign, this is the one that you want to put up. Correct. But you have a smaller one in front of your door, on your door. I've got some stuff on the window glass, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. And, uh, and then at your door, it has an arrow that says, go to the next door. <coughs> so can you... Is this operational? Is your building operational the now? The building's operational, but everyone uses the main gym entrance rather than entering right into that space. Okay. And that's actually been like that forever. The gym does not use those front doors. Okay. So once this goes up permanently, then they will still have to... Correct. They'll go through the gym door, the main gym entrance. Okay. Uh, yes, uh, roll call. The motion was by Mr. Sharma. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mr. Markowitz? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. And Mr. Spice? Yes. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay, the next item on the agenda is case number 21-07-57, 2695 Creaseside Drive, Fun Buffet Signage, uh, Mr. Zhao, owner. Hello, uh, good evening. Hi. My name is Kevin Holliday. I'm from Sign Above. Um, I'm representing the owner of Fun Buffet. 
Um, and we are looking for approval uh, for two signs. I apologize, this is my first time uh, coming to you guys. I'm a new salesman with the company, but I did print out um, the signs that we're looking for approval for, and I have the sizes written down. I don't know if any of you guys would like to see them. Yeah, okay. Oh, you got a copy? Oh, okay. Did you have this one as well? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, we're looking for approval to install the sign. The uh, light up sign would be put up uh, about 25 feet high. Um, we're taking down the signs that say uh, Mandarin Seafood Buffet, and we would be filling in the holes there so there wouldn't be any holes left on the building. Okay. And then we would be replacing. The white and red fun buffet sign um, goes on the, the the big light up sign for Creekside Plaza. It would be replacing the Mandarin Seafood Buffet sign. Okay. Are you are you open yet? Are you just starting to open, or you're starting to build it? I believe it? they're opening. You said two three weeks. Two three weeks. Yeah. Is this the face of the building that you'd be doing the sign change to? Uh, yes. Yes, so existing currently, it just says buffet. Yes, and, and you're we taking down buffet. that sign. Yes, and you're putting up one that says fun buffet. Fun buffet. Yeah, okay. that light up sign. In this photo, the text is red color, but in the last photo, it's an orange. So it's two different signs. Uh, the one that's an orange is going on the building. The white and red is going on that. Uh, like the entrance of the Creekside Plaza, where it's got like the Kent State, Chipotle, Brewsters. Yeah, the directory sign. Yes. Okay, so this red sign that we're seeing that says 96 inches. Yes. That is going in the monument sign. Yes. Yeah, we took an accurate measurement, got the height, width, and depth. And this is the monument sign that it's going into. Yes, it's replacing the Mandarin Seafood Buffet sign. So the name of your business is Fun Buffet, right? Uh, the name of their business, yes. Um, I am the, the sign company representative. Oh, okay. Fun Buffet, okay. Okay. So currently, I'm looking at just the um, monument sign to start with here, that Creekside Common sign. Mm -hmm. We do have Brewsters with a white background. And we do have Chipotle with a red logo. So the colors being proposed are not, you know, uncommon to the sign. Okay. I feel like the lettering on it is a little bit large. It only has, it's tough to see. It doesn't say what the height of the letters are compared with the sign, but it completely fills the sign. Uh, yes, I believe there's uh, one inch of space between the the top of the letter and the top of the sign. So one inch from bottom of the sign to letter and an inch from right. letter to top of sign. Which is similar to what the Gander Mountain is currently, although Gander Mountain is not in there. That sign, I'm surprised, this, perhaps this was, the photo was taken before that was changed. Because I think Gander Mountain sign came down when Finders Keepers went in. Um, yeah, my question is just like if the text is just a little too big. Is this screen printed? Uh, yes, it's uh, vinyl. It's vinyl on acrylic. And I'd want to see probably at, at, at this scale, wouldn't you imagine four inches, six inches maybe even to the left and to the right of the words, four, maybe four inches? Otherwise, it really feels like it's. Um, pushing the space. So the text would be just a, a, a small, just a little bit smaller. You'd want the text to be smaller? Just a little, yeah. Okay. Doing what? Just because it goes right to the edge of the sign. I mean, it, you're right, I mean, the letters only have it and at that scale on a 96 inch to have the letters be within an inch of the size of the sign. Okay. I feel like I'd make it a little smaller, not 
as small as something like the Metro Park and Ride or Arby's. Those are quite small, but closer in scale to what it said when it was Mandarin Seafood Buffet. Mm -hmm. But what would be an appropriate distance from the edge of the sign to the beginning of the letters? <laughs> I would say about four inches. Okay. Three inches, maybe. I don't. I mean, if you're screen printing it, I know you can just scale the sign. It's just, just scale the letters, correct? I'd be okay with something where they have now the Which about the same thing. What would you think that is? Maybe two and a half or something. As long as it looks like it's two separate words. Is the Gander Mountain still up there too? It's still I'm not, sitting there? I'm not no. Certain. I think the Gander Mountain yeah. sign came down with Finders Keepers yeah. now. Is it, so this is yeah, it's old. still, yeah, it's on here. Right, it's because the Gander Mountain fills it top to bottom, but it doesn't fill it left to right also, where your sign is filling it top to bottom and left. Is there any issue with the top to bottom letter size, or is that okay? That was also, yeah, about an inch. Now, your sign is going to say fun buffet? Yes. So without having you come back through again showing us your text, I would just take the exact text you have and just shoot it. If that's if that works for how you produce your sign. Yeah, uh, that would be fine. We can do that. That would be good because then you'll end up with two or three inches on the side and maybe an inch and a half or an inch and a quarter top to bottom. And okay. Is that okay. Would you would you need me to come back? No. Okay. Okay. Can you provide a rendering of your sign? Yes, I can. We I don't have it with me at the moment, but I can do that for you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. If you could show it, like how the sign would look on the building, that would have helped me better. To see it. Like as far as like you know, superimposed on the building. Right. Okay. Like so this spot is going to be. At. I think we should vote separately on these two. What two are you voting on separately? Each the, the wall sign signs. and then the ground sign. Yeah, the one <coughs> that is the landscape yeah. sign and the Creekside Commons. Um, we just discussed that. Um, just shrinking the text. So, do you want to make a motion to vote on them separately first? Yeah. Okay, I'll make a motion to vote separately on the two signs. Yeah, I'll second it. What are the directional signs for? Though are those changing? Or why are they? Why are there pictures on there? It's kind of windy back there. Yeah, like sometimes you like, don't know which driveway to pull down. Sometimes. Uh, technically, it would be three. So the the fun buffet sign going on the building, and then the the monument sign. Obviously, it's double sided. Yeah, that's just scratching off vinyl, putting on new vinyl. The roll call. Mr. Markowitz? Uh, yes. This is to vote on the sign separately. Right. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Midley? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Spice? Yes. Okay, so then for the first one we can vote on because we've already discussed it, the monument sign um, in the Creekside Commons Directory Monument. Um, to approve as noted, I make a motion to approve it as noted, the note being that the text should shrink a bit, um, maybe at 90% scale or so. So there would be approximately three inches to the left, three inches to the right, an inch and a half or so, top to bottom, spacing around the words so that they don't completely fill the placard. Okay. Can I I'm ask, sorry, who uh, seconded that? Is that Mr. Spice that seconded it? No, Mr. Sharma. Oh, Mr. Sharma, thanks. Can I ask one of you guys a question? So you mentioned the rendering. Could I have an email address to send the rendering to? You send it to the building department, which is where all these documents would normally come in. Okay. I'll give it to you after, if you want. 
Okay, that'd be good. Thank you. Uh, roll call, Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Markowitz? Yes. Mr. Midlick? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Spice? Yes. So next we have um, the sign that's changing from the red sign that just says buffet to the orange sign that says fun buffet. Is that sign reflecting light or is it damaged on the app? Um, that's just reflecting light. Okay. Is that what? Yes, it is illuminated. And we have some dimensions for it, 13 feet, 20 inches, 6 inches. Is the current buffet sign the 20 inch tall lettering also? I was not able to get up that high to measure. To be honest with you, I, I would guess yes. It looks about right. If those blocks are eight inch blocks, that'd be 16 to 19, approximately 20. Okay. Um, I'll make a motion to approve it as. I'll second it. Yeah. Oh, sure. Mr. Markowitz? Uh, yes. Mr. Midley? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Spice? Yes. Okay. And then in our packet, we have two signs that you don't show any changes to. They're the directional signs that say Gander Mountain, or sorry, they say Creekside Square, Mandarin Seafood Buffet, and then the other one doesn't have your name on it at all. Just Gander Mountain and Metro Park and Were you making changes to those directional signs? Uh, yes, we were just going to take off the Mandarin Seafood Buffet and put on with the same font and size Fun Buffet um, and not change the direction. Okay, and then so that on that side and then on the other side, you're not on here. Were you planning to make any changes to this sign? Uh, which sign is that? This one has Gander Mountain, Metro Park and Ride, and all deliveries. It doesn't have anything about the former tenant space. If, if it doesn't have it, then no. Okay. Okay. Then I can make a motion to modify the Creekside Square directional signage to say Fun Buffet in the same font, text, size as the previous. Yes. I'll second that. Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Markowitz? Uh, yes. Mr. Midlake? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Spice? Yes. That's all done. So okay. You're approved with the only note of shrinking the letters on the one. So we ended up with three, three separate votes. We did on that. Three, three stamps. We said it to. Perfect. Thank you very much. And I, I just want the, the email address to send the right direct to it. Yeah, if you want to have a seat, it should be done. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I wonder if they're taking over the whole space. Yes. That's a pretty big space there. A while ago, yeah, over a year ago, maybe longer. You know, I need a little buzz, right? Exactly. It was hard to mm -hmm. the health inspection thing. Yeah. Anyone? It actually looks Next item on the agenda is case number 21-07-582336 Champion Trail, building alteration and addition 
fresh look remodeling Jeffrey Stats homeowner. Uh, good evening. Um, just looking for approval for. Oh, for a minute. oh yeah. We're still trying to get this. Oh, sorry. I don't have a sign either. So. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah, thank you so for a minute. So we yep. We just made three motions. I was sitting for a while. I'll just look away. <laughs> There's three spots to sign on. on that one? Yeah, both of them. Oh, I didn't sign all three of them. I thought you may have given me three of them. So. <laughs> Jen, you can sign it for me. Initial it. There's three places, so, yeah. so they signed up for this already. Yeah, there's three changes in there. If you're flipping, there's three different stamps. Do you have pictures of the existing house? I do. Okay. That'll help us a little bit. One more. Right there. I'll, I'll check them for you. Somebody forgot to sign this one. I think I see you. We can sign it. Yeah. Better to save this up. <laughs> okay, yeah, um, just looking to uh, get approval for an addition on the back of our house. So we're going to um, enlarge the kitchen and then have a room off of that kitchen. So it's about 179 square feet or so. Okay. Um, yep. Is that room intended to be a dining space? No. Okay, it seems small for that. No, it's like a, yeah, it, well, it's, it's going to be, it's almost like a L shaped Tetris piece where it's going to be, like, we're going to bump the kitchen out. And then have a little bit of like almost like a sunroom, but just like a little kind of transition room. Okay. Yeah, past that peninsula. If you, you could have yeah seating in there. It'll be Not we'll probably have a small table. table. Yeah, okay. it'll be like a. It's probably going to be a drop zone and a you know little couch area or something. Okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> oh, we have the smallest house on the on the plan in there, so we need it for three boys. So, <laughs> yeah. All materials are going to match the house. The siding. They will. And the yep, roof. siding and roof. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's, are the windows the same look as the house too? The, the windows same. will have the same. I think it's like mullions or whatever, but it'll be yeah. the same vinyl windows. We actually had those have been re replaced before we moved in, so it'll be the same look. Yeah. Okay. But it's it's not attached to the house. Though. It is attached. It is like. That. Yeah, we are taking out that wall, and then we're enlarging the kitchen towards the back, and then adding a, a larger space. So it'll replace most of the patio. The concrete patio there but it will be attached to the house I know I know I like to grill so we'll be grilling a lot <laughs> Anything really wrong with it? Looks good. I'll move to approve it as submitted. If everyone's okay, I'll second. Mr. Sherman. Yes. Mr. Spice. Yes. Mrs. Frazier. Yes. Mr. Markwitz. Yes. Mr. Midlick. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good one. Right. Thank you too. The fifth and last case for this evening is twenty one dash zero seven dash five nine. 3037 Irene Elaine Pavilion, Tracy and Denise Churchill, homeowner. Hello. Hello. Um, Tracy's supposed to be here, but he's still golfing. So <laughs> I hope I can answer anything, okay. you know, that you may ask of me. Priorities, right? <laughs> but anyway, um, what we're interested in is building a 12 by 12 pavilion in our backyard. It's um, the sun beats pretty bad back there mm -hmm. um, so we originally when we were living in reminderville we we built the same thing but this is a much smaller version 144 square feet <clears throat> just curious the picture that you're showing here yes that's exactly how it'll look or? yes okay but it's it's a smaller version like I said it's got shingles 12. on the roof yes same shingles how far will this sit from the house? Um, you know, I I took a picture of that. <clears throat> you said your patio is 
20 by 26. But the pavilion you're building is 12 by 12. 12. By 12. Okay. And it's closer to the front yard. Um, I'm sorry, the backyard. But it's closer to the grass. Here's a picture of it. So are you cutting through the concrete? Is that what you're doing? No. no? You're just no, bolting it down. So there are no footers under this? There, we have the post on bracket. Um, well, we don't want to dig. There's pictures in there. And there's pictures in there. We have it on this bracket right now. And there's going to be hurricane needles going inside into the post. And then it's bolted. Right now, the brackets are bolted. With this bolt that goes all the way into the concrete. And how thick is the slab? They're usually four inches, four to five inches. inches. And then a 12 by 12 structure on four bolts without a foundation or a footer underneath is concerning. Um, that first bolt, first just crack, first you had the shear force on the bolt, the cracking of the slab, and the possible collapse of the structure with, you know, freeze thaw and the shifting. To me, I, I would have always put a footer, I'd always put footers underneath the columns. Well, I think that's well, it doesn't have a roof on it yet, and it hasn't been through a winter or two yet. Well, we can ask the commissioner. <laughs> yeah, we, we would have to do a plan review on it, a building plan review as far as the structural right. and the uh, requirements of the building code. So typically a footing is required because what happens is your slab is going to move every year with frost. So it's not only is it going to break, but it could also start to dismantle your pavilion. So do you guys want us to dig through the concrete? Do you need to leave and put concrete posts, yeah. and put concrete, like put the posts in and then yeah. put concrete yeah. around? Is that what you want us to Typically, do? Typically, yeah. They would either cut a square hole or a round hole. Okay. And you would go down 42 inches and then put concrete down there. Okay. We could do that. And then you could bring the concrete back up and then anchor it as you're showing. Okay. That's possible. Okay, we can do that. We'll, we'll just dig right yeah. through the concrete. It wouldn't handle the wind too well if you didn't. Okay. And how far out from the house is this platform? That I don't know exactly. Um, I can give you an estimate. The house is back here. The house is way back here. So it's closer to the grass. The squares are about five feet. Your concrete yeah. squares, so okay. approximately 10. So is that bridge you'll be digging on those squares? Or yes. In the yeah, on oh, those squares. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Will you be wrapping or staining the wood? Yes, vinyl wrapping. Vinyl White. Wrapping. Okay, and so then we'll have a, a base. Um, a base piece of something like three or four inches or six inches, something at the bottom. Yes. Okay. Yes. Or if it's the one that already looks like a column. Okay, so it'll be wrapped. Um, Since we're going to be digging where it's at right now, this is. If you look at this picture right here, and this is what it looks like. Right. Um, well, we have, yeah, yeah, I see that. So then you have right. You have the roofing that matches the, the house. Right, going to wrap yeah. it. It'll yes. match the trim of the house. Yes. The only other thing that to me looked a little odd is the diagonal bracing. Is that normal? Because it doesn't hit at the most point of the house. I don't know if I've seen that. Normal. Usually, when you have the diagonal bracing, it's um, either tying to the bottom of the column or it's up near the top of it just to give it some rigidity. When you hit it right in the middle of the column, I don't know that it would necessarily bend the columns, but just when I see that, that's my. So, did you want that there or no? I don't think I have a problem where I keep them small and up high. Smaller and up high. Right, because the weakest part of a column is in the middle of it. And so, when you're putting that diagonal force right into the middle of it, you're asking for it to start bowing. Okay. Then we can put it up higher. In regards to the digging, when we pull, put the posts in, mm -hmm. um, how far am I supposed to dig to get that post in there? 42 inches. 42? Okay. Yeah. 
from and the that, top that of the varies concrete. varies based on location here in Cleveland area, it's 42. 42, okay. That's how far down the ground will freeze. Okay, that's fine. We can do that. Okay. And, and then we're going to have the post where they're, right now we have where the brackets are at, that's where we're going to dig right there. Is that acceptable well, you to could, everyone? You could put the post, you could put a footer and then a post on top of it. Okay. But I mean, the, the building department will kind of walk you through it. Okay. So for the rest of it, if you're finishing the underside of it, um, you'll have the roofing on the underside will be finished so that it's not nails poking through. Yes, the yes, okay. yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll make a motion to approve where the minor changes to the footers. The diagonal yeah. bracing the diagonal location. Bracing. Yes, okay. Yeah, when bracing. And then this wrap. The vinyl wrap will be white. Right. And then it's white. And that the roofing material matches the existing. Yes, area. we already have the same roofing, so we're good. Okay, okay cool. Yeah. Can I get a second? I'll second. I thought it already been seconded. Yeah. Sorry about that. I didn't hear. Uh, Mrs. Frazier? Yes. Mr. Markowitz? Yes. Mr. Midley? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Spice? Yes. Wait, All right, thank you. Okay. Yeah. Not young, Jen. Thank you. The building department says it's the best one ever built. Are you waiting for an email? Yes. Record this? Yes. Go for it. Send it to uh, the building department. Actually, on our building department page, you can either send it to me directly. That's K F O U L K E S at twinsburg dot o h dot u s. It has to be page dot u s. Correct. Okay. Okay. Thanks. <coughs> And if you haven't heard something in less than a, you know in a week, then yeah, typically we'll we'll look at those plans for the building code. If you haven't provided us with the document that you are intending to send over, then we won't approve it until that time. Okay, I got you. So we need that document, and then you need to pay for the permit fees. Okay. Then you can hang the signs. Then we can do all Yes. Okay. Because the the moment of the day when people were asking me, like, you know, they want to sign it as soon as possible, obviously. Right. I think, um, you know, some of the signage you showed didn't even show your actual physical rendering of your sign on the panel. Um, so I think that's where the scale issue came into place. But 
I think you need to submit that so we could review it in accordance with what the motion was. And then we would also check to the building code for your electrically lit sign. And then we would issue the permits on that, but that's typically the process. So usually it would only take about five days. Okay. If we have everything. Okay. So the next step is I'll just send you the rendering and then you guys will be in contact with me. Yes. We call you as soon as it's ready to pay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a good night. You too. <laughs> okay. So we can take your case as a, a preliminary. I appreciate it. We'll take a look at it that way. Hopefully, when you're on the agenda next time, we won't send you back home for more information. <laughs> don't have a meeting if there's a thing on the agenda. Appreciate it. I made all the phone calls and sent all the emails. I must have missed. Is this going to be a case? Or are we going to just look um, at it? We're just looking at it preliminarily tonight, okay. and then um, they'll be back when they're on the agenda. That's my third edition, but the first time I've actually had to go in front of a esteemed professional panel is this. Lynnhurst and South Euclid aren't as okay. detailed. You've done two additions to this. That wasn't, that wasn't always the case there. Oh, no. Different cities. Okay. That's not been the case there over the years. I can yeah. tell you that. Like the facilities. Right. You try to protect there. the property values of the housing oh, stock that Twinsburg has and, you know, for neighbors. And yes. Absolutely. Anyone can move in and make changes in their yes. I absolutely so, love it. And that's probably why we settled in Twinsburg. Um, the second page might be the best place to start. I don't know. Um, we're asking actually for three items, two additions. I don't know if it would be considered one, but two exterior additions. Mm -hmm. We wanted to bump out our kitchen six to eight feet um, just so we can fit all the appliances and the countertops that we need. And then uh, add to the back of our garage as well, just because the garages are so small and two, three grandkids and all the toys. There's no place, no place to put everything. So the other one is, is interior. We wanted to take out a wall, a load-bearing wall. I'm not sure if that's in your um, circle or not, if, if we need to get approval from you on that one. I know the building department would have to come in and, and yeah, approve that. The interior only would be building department, not the RD. OK, all right. Um, so from this set of plans, you're probably not on the agenda because you don't have any elevations. OK. Done. Okay. Um, so, if, or you missed the deadline, I don't know what the reason is. But that is one thing you're missing is elevations. So we'll need elevations of each face that's affected and then a photo of, you know, the rest of the house. Okay. So you'll need an elevation of the right side where you're putting the addition behind your garage. You'll need an elevation drawn of, do you know what an elevation is? I'm, I'm assuming that, you know, you put your footer in and how high up the, the base of the floor it's is going to be. It's, yeah. a, it's a vertical plan. Okay. So just the way you drew a plan, we need to know what it looks like, like as if it was a photograph, but it's drawn and dimensioned. Okay. Um, so then we need one of the rear that shows the two different additions as long as well as the rest of the house that's with it. So we'll see the roof, we'll see the upstairs, we'll see the downstairs. Are you doing just a single story addition? We'll see the roof, you know, how the roof connects to the existing house, where okay. the windows are located. Um, You'll have usually the window approximate window sizes. I know it may change slightly depending on your manufacturer, but approximate window sizes, locations, um, the roof slope. You'll have the materials. If it's all matching, you could just say it's all to match. Yeah. Okay. And then we don't have to worry so much about color. Okay. Um, and then you'll need one of the um, other side of your house, which shows, I guess it's your living room wall with your chimney, and then it'll jump back and we'll see this addition to the kitchen beyond. So. You might want to have a print drawn out by somebody. There, um, there's some affordable people that can do it. Some people, yeah, can do it quickly and affordable. Yeah. Uh, you know what, I, 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 I used to say that. I see you, you did, this is acceptable for a plan for, um, for a resident. It has dimensions. It has windows locations, and I could approve off of this just for the plan, but we need all those elevations to go with it. Okay. Okay. That really shows us how it ties into the structure. Yeah. And then photographs of each side of the house, so that in case your elevation isn't quite as clear as we need it to be, we can at least look at the photos and piece it together. Um, does your garage have a man door to it currently? Yes. 
Okay, we need, we'll need to see that on there. We've been putting them on all garages. Yeah. So we need to know that that doesn't disappear with this addition, that it's okay. still there. Um, yeah, and then, is that deck remaining? Yes, yeah, so I'll rebuild it. Um, most of the deck will stay. Um, I'll have to move the hot tub, obviously, north. I think that's northeast to where the current patio is. And then rebuild the deck around around the bump out and around the deck. I mean around the hot tub as well. Okay. From the plan, it looks logical. We'll see what it looks like when we see elevations and how the roofs tie in. Um, if you were on the agenda today with what you brought in, you would have been a revised resubmit anyway. Okay. So you didn't lose any time. All right. Thanks for the preseason. <laughs> I appreciate it. Appreciate, it. appreciate it. your time. Okay. There, was, there right. was a guy, he, I think Plan Works did really affordable type quick drawings. Plan Works? Yeah, but I don't know if there's, you know, that could have changed. Right. By the time you spend 10 hours doing it, maybe it would be hard to just yeah. have somebody come. It's been at least 10 already. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so yeah. Right. If you pay someone a couple hundred dollars yeah. to do it, it might be worth yeah. behind on their yeah. But if, yeah. They'll get through here. And you're quick. building it yourself? Yes, I'll be doing okay. the work myself. Okay. Right. Okay. And my partner here. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Be before you leave, can I get the, both your names and the spelling, please? Yes. Robert. Yeah, did we say his name? Um, no, because we did the stamp card, so we can hold on. Um, you may also need an HOA approval letter from your association. I would, yes, you need that for your permit, and then... Um, Typically, uh, you would also have an uh, owner's affidavit if you're doing the work knew yourself. I a lot of uh, people that did some of the prints pretty affordably. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And were they in metal work? That's what I heard. Yeah. Do you have a motion to adjourn? Or? No, I have a quick thing to bring up. I know we didn't have a work session on here, but. Today I was working on um, some windows on the residence, and I looked up the code to see the egress requirements from the bedrooms, and I noted that the code is now worded differently than it used to be, um, which if you go by the letter of it, it has basements all requiring egress now, whether or not it's- What section is that you're reading? Okay, this is section 1030, section 1030, emergency escape and rescue. Of which code? Ohio Building Code. It's the residential code of Ohio is what applies to residences, not the Ohio Building Code. The Ohio Building Code is for non-residential construction only. But actually, it's talking about residences in um, Group R2, Group R3, basements, sleeping rooms. Correct. Right. It's R2 That's is for you know apartments, uh, condo units, things like that. Um, but the residential code of Ohio applies to one, two, and three family dwellings only. The building code, OBC, applies to more than that. So there could be four or more, like Wilcox Meadows, similar to that. Um, okay. But I'm not aware in the code, the section you're referring to, that requires an egress window in a basement. The only time that's required is if there's a sleeping room in there. And that's the emergency escape rescue section. Verbatim, it says basements and sleeping rooms below the fourth story above grade plane shall have at least one exterior emergency escape or rescue opening in accordance with this section. Where basements contain one or more sleeping rooms, emergency escape and rescue openings shall be required in each sleeping room, but shall not be required in adjoining areas of the basement. Did you say before the below the fourth story? Yes. Okay. Below the fourth story. So basement, first, second, and third stories would need to have the egress windows. Um, exceptions, basements with a ceiling height of less than 80 inches, which is six foot eight, the height of a standard door. So if the door is sweeping the ceiling, then it, once you reach that point, then you would need to have them. Um, they're also not required from basements or sleeping rooms that have an exit door or exit access door that opens directly into a public way or yard. So that is saying if it's a walkout basement, you don't need one. Okay, but again, it doesn't apply to single family in the state of Ohio. Okay. 
even because you're saying that the the Ohio Residential Code the Residential Code of Ohio the Ohio Building Code. I'm not Especially saying it's higher. I'm saying that jurisdictionally, the single family dwellings, one, two, and three family, fall under the Residential Code of Ohio solely. The Ohio Building Code does not apply to those, except in certain cases, okay. but it doesn't, not with the egress. It's chapter three is what applies in the Residential Code of Ohio for single family dwellings for egress. Okay. So this section, Emergency Escape and Rescue um, 1030 of the Ohio Building Code, is not applicable to single family residents. Correct. I wish it would say that in here because it doesn't. And we got called on something trying to get the minimum dimensions along with the minimum size. Um, minimum dimensions, they call out at 24 inches by 20 inches, and also um, square feet of 5.7 square feet. Correct. And a double hung window that is three foot tall and four foot wide doesn't quite comply with the height because 24 inch opening is with the center style, you actually only have 23 inches. So a four foot tall window is technically an inch too short. Right, you almost need so a 305 need, Right, in order to get the bedroom windows in. And while I was reading this section of the code to see that the, you know, the four foot tall window does not count for egress, I saw the basement part of it and I thought, you know, we keep talking about egress from basements being recommended. And I'm like, here it is that it's required, but you're saying that the, this residential code is not no, you need, you need to read Chapter 1, the administrative section of both codes. Mm -hmm. The administrative section refers to the building code for all non-residential structures. Okay. I shouldn't say that, not non-residential, because there right, are residential. This is residential. This is, right, it's, it's well, because there are apartments and but this is just apartments and, okay. things like that. Because you could have an R2 with an interior entrance into a residence, and then you could have an R3 with exterior entrance, just like Wilcox. That still falls under the Ohio Building Code because of the fact that they have four or more units, dwelling units, in one building. Right, but then they also didn't want to go with, they also said that they were residential um, and not having to have their door clearances or their entrances and exits. In, in chapter one, there's allowances for exceptions of certain sections. Historically, chapters one through 10 could apply from the International Residential Code before the Residential Code was adopted. Now, that section of the code is still permitted to be used for certain residential projects, but it's, it's very specific and the designer has to choose those exceptions on the onset. He can't mix or match okay. codes. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, that's all. Okay. I'll make a motion to I got three seconds. Who <laughs> wants to be the lucky one? Mr. Spice, you seconded it. Okay, Mrs. Frazier. Mr. Markowitz? Yes. Mr. Midley? Yes. Mr. Sharma? Yes. Mr. Spice? Yes. 